GCSE Physics Boosters Atomic Structure 1. This is the first video in this section. Uh, so we're going to cover some basic stuff, stuff you probably know already. Here we go. Now, the way we think about atoms has changed over thousands of years. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk about how the model of atoms has developed over time. Uh, but this video is just covering some basic stuff about what you need to know at GCSE. If you do A-level physics and chemistry, you'll see that atoms are actually even stranger than this. OK, but uh, that's for later, maybe. There's a very, very good video to watch uh, a boy and his atom on YouTube. Uh, they, they can actually move atoms around and have created this this wild little video. There's another video as well on how this video was made, which is worth having a look at. So here are some key facts about atoms. Atoms are very small. Uh, we're talking about one times 10 to the minus 10 meters. That means 0 0.0000001 meter. One times 10 to the minus 10. Uh, in a millimeter, you could get 10 million of them in a row in a millimeter. Atoms are very small. Uh, and atoms have a tiny, tiny bit in the middle. And the Latin word for bit in the middle is nucleus. Uh, and the nucleus is even smaller. It's 10,000 times smaller. OK, and in the nucleus, there are protons and neutrons. Uh, and then whizzing around the outside, there are electrons. Talking about how small the nucleus is, if you imagine a, a football stadium and then imagine a P yeah, in the middle of the football stadium or a smarty in the middle of a football stadium, that's how big the nucleus is compared to the atom. OK, nuclei are very small. Protons and neutrons in the middle, electrons whizzing around the outside. Electrons have a tiny mass compared to protons and neutrons. It's about uh, two thousandth of the mass. So nearly all of the mass of the atom is concentrated in the nucleus. Uh, and an atom is almost entirely empty space. There's not a great deal to it. So this means that the nucleus will have a very, very high density. Remember, density is mass divided by volume. Something you need to know about atoms is that atoms can become excited. OK, now there's different ways you can excite an atom. Uh, one way is if the atom absorbs some uh, electromagnetic radiation. If it absorbs, for example, it, if it absorbs light. Uh, what happens inside the atom is that one of the electrons jumps up to a higher energy level. It actually jumps up to a level which is further away from the nucleus where it has more energy. And then later on, at some point in the future, the electron falls back down again and it loses this energy by giving off a photon. So you have excitation, you can excite it and the electron jumps up to a higher energy level and then later on the electron falls down again and it emits a photon. Sometimes, sometime later the electron will fall down to the lower energy level and a packet of energy called a photon, which is electromagnetic radiation, will be emitted. This is where light comes from. Light comes from excited atoms. Uh, later on, we'll talk more about spectra when we do the astronomy, when we do the space. Uh, in A-level physics and chemistry, again, it's a very important topic. There's uh, absorption spectra and there's emission spectra. Uh, and you can actually figure out what things are made out of. For example, stars, by looking at the, uh, the light that's been absorbed, that tells you what atoms they contain. Atoms are made up of protons, electrons and neutrons. What do you need to know about them? Well, uh, as we said, the protons and the neutrons are in the nucleus. 
the electrons are orbiting the nucleus, a little bit like the moon orbiting the Earth. Uh, protons and neutrons are much heavier, 2,000 times heavier than electrons. Electrons are very light. Protons are positive, electrons are negative, neutrons are neutral. And this will mean that the nucleus is positive because it's got protons in it. Um, overall, however, atoms have no charge. Atoms are neutral because an atom has the same number of protons and electrons. If it loses or gains electrons, then it becomes an ion. OK, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. These two numbers. Now, there's a big number and a small number. Uh, usually, it's the big numbers on top and the little numbers underneath. The big number is called the mass number. And the mass number tells us protons plus neutrons. OK, the small number is called the atomic number, or you can call it the proton number. But you need to know it's called the atomic number. And that is the number of protons. And for an atom, it's also the number of electrons. For example, this sodium atom has got 11 protons and 11 electrons. Uh, it has 12 neutrons. How do I know? Well, 23. If it's got 11 protons, then 23 minus 11 is 12. So it's got 12 neutrons. So big number, little number. Little number is the atomic number or the proton number. And then the big number is the mass number. And that's protons plus neutrons. OK, prove you understood that. Pen, paper, pencil, work it out. How many protons, electrons and neutrons do these atoms have? And I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. There you go. OK, so the number at the bottom is the number of protons and the number of electrons, if it's an atom. Uh, and then if you take the, the little number away from the big number, that tells you the number of neutrons. Notice that the number of protons and neutrons isn't necessarily the same, uh, especially for the big atoms, for the heavy elements. Now, um, not all uh, magnesium atoms or sodium atoms or whatever have the same number of neutrons. They've all got the same number of protons. They've all got the same atomic number. Uh, here we have the stable isotopes of magnesium. So the, if you like, these are different types of magnesium atom. Notice that the atomic number is the same. They've all got 12 protons. OK, but they've got different numbers of neutrons. The first one has got 12 neutrons. The next one has got 13. The next one has got 14. They've got different numbers of neutrons. Uh, they are isotopes of magnesium. Iso means the same. Topes means properties. They've got the same chemical properties, but uh, they have different masses because they have different numbers of neutrons. I've also written down uh, their abundance. So 79% of magnesium is 2412, 10% uh, is uh, 2512, etc. So all magnesium atoms have 12 protons and 12 electrons. The number of neutrons can vary. Uh, these are the stable isotopes of magnesium. Uh, and their abundances. There are some unstable isotopes as well, but we'll worry about them later. Now, when you look on a periodic table, for example here, uh, notice that for magnesium, for the mass number, or rather for the relative atomic mass, it's put 24.305, uh, and that's basically a, a weighted average. OK, weighted as in it takes into account that there's more 2412 than the others. OK, notice also uh, that on this periodic table, they've put the mass number at the bottom. So don't worry about it. The mass number is the big one. The atomic number is the small one. 
Now, last slide, if an atom loses one or more electrons, then it becomes a positive ion. Uh, if lithium loses an electron, it becomes Li plus, a lithium ion. If uh, an iron atom loses two electrons, it becomes Fe2 plus, that's an iron ion. Okay, uh, metals become positive ions, metals lose electrons and become positive ions. If an atom gains one or more electrons, then it becomes a negative ion. If a chlorine atom uh, gained an electron, it would become a chloride ion, Cl minus. If an oxygen atom gained two electrons, it would become an oxide ion. Yeah, O2 minus, getting very chemistry here.